Okay, class, today we are talking about a technology called Bluetooth. <clears throat> Eric, you have a question already? Yeah, I'll be honest. I have never truly understood Bluetooth, even though I use it every day. Is there gonna be a test on this? Bluetooth is really easy to use and pretty helpful once you understand it, okay? By the end of this lesson, you will be a pro. All right, Bluetooth is a technology that lets digital devices talk to each other wirelessly, like smartphones and earbuds, or computers and keyboards. This conversation, it's just data. Most Bluetooth gadgets are designed for personal use, typically used in close range, but up to about 33 feet or 10 meters max. A popular use for Bluetooth is audio, so today we're going to focus on wireless audio for headphones, earbuds, and speakers. Okay, imagine two people from vastly different cultures trying to communicate across a room. Okay, they would probably start with simple gestures and build up from there, right? Bluetooth does the same thing. Those devices are agreeing upon a common language and then choosing their vocabulary based on what they can mutually understand. Yes, Derek. Yeah, Bluetooth, data, but the question is, how do I get sound from my smartphone to my headphones without a wire? Well, to get audio data across that room without wires, those two people would compress the data, toss it, back and forth, just like that. It's fast and simple, even if receiving the information means sacrificing some perfection. But if quality matters a lot, they could fold the data or even gently roll it up. Sure, it takes more effort and time, but preserves more detail on the other end. Now, as long as the other party knows how to unpack it, the message gets through. And that's one of the coolest features of audio over Bluetooth. The two devices will automatically agree upon the best possible way to share data based on their mutual skills. So if it's just data, why don't we just use Wi-Fi? Great question. Although they both shuttle data wirelessly, Bluetooth isn't Wi-Fi. Think of it this way. Bluetooth connects devices to each other while Wi-Fi connects devices to networks. Bluetooth is built for personal tasks like mouse clicks, like file sharing, phone calls, or streaming audio content. You'll often find both of them running at the same exact time, but doing different jobs, and that separation is a good thing. So if all of our Bluetooth devices are speaking the same language, then isn't all Bluetooth the same? Because your Bluetooth headphones and say your Bluetooth keyboard are used for different tasks, their vocabulary of features is going to be different, right? You wouldn't expect audio to stream out of your printer, for example. And as Bluetooth audio has evolved, features have been introduced to make the experience more powerful. But like everything in life, not every customer needs every feature. Are you saying we can't use the features on our Bluetooth headphones? Like that's the whole reason I bought them. If you check your audio sources capabilities first, you'll always be able to match up the technology with your own needs. For example, if you want to send audio to two sets of earbuds at once with Bluetooth, well, both the source and the earbuds need to support AuraCast. Here's another common one. Most newer video game consoles have Bluetooth built in, but it's not always programmed for high performance audio, despite how logical that may seem. The great thing about advanced Bluetooth headphones from brands like Sennheiser is that the headphones are usually ahead of the curve and ready for whenever you upgrade your source or if the source gets upgraded first. Derek, question. No, just a thought. I swear, my devices have a mind of their own between pairing and reconnecting and turning things on and off. I don't know what my Bluetooth is doing half the time. I hear that a lot, but 99.99% of the time, it's us humans doing it wrong. The first thing you need to know is that, yes, Bluetooth connections are like formal conversations and therefore they need to start with a proper handshake. That handshake tells the gadgets that it's time to talk to each other. We call this pairing, literally a pair of devices. Pairing is like saying, 
I trust this guy, let's connect. And it's about consent and security so that only you are having a conversation with the bank and not that sketchy guy in the park bench. Okay, let's teach you the pass trick because we want to pass audio back and forth, right? P-A-S-S. -S. All right, you try it. Power up your gadget. Activate pairing mode on the gadget. Search for that gadget with your audio source. Select it. That's it. That is the best way to connect practically every audio device out there in the right order. It tells the audio source, hey, I'm here, I speak your language, and when the source starts looking around, it can easily see the new connection it has to consent to. Okay, but sometimes like, I'll turn on Bluetooth and the connection will go to the earbuds in my bag or like my friend's Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, why is that? Great question. Let's talk about pairings versus active connections. Today's Bluetooth devices can remember a lot of their pairings, but they can only perform one audio stream at a time. Otherwise, it would be like having two conversations with two strangers at the same time. Thankfully, there's multipoint, which is pretty multi common nowadays. Multipoint is when a device like your headphones can juggle multiple Bluetooth connections. For example, those headphones, they can connect to a smartphone and a computer so that if a conference call comes in while you're vibing out, you can switch over to that call and take it, automatically switch back when you're done. Most headphones will jump back to the last device used if that device is still on and vice versa. Yeah, I've got like a thousand of my friend's Bluetooth speakers listed in my settings. Bingo. If you have a lot of devices connected to your computer or your phone, it is programmed to start searching for an active connection going through that device list in order. It's always best to delete those devices from the menu if you don't intend on using them regularly so that your phone or your computer doesn't get confused. Remember, it's only doing what it was programmed to do. And if you follow the pass method, your new headphones should always be first in line anyways. I've done this once before, but how come the connection keeps breaking up? Remember, Bluetooth is for personal use with personal range. Most of the time, the audio source will be in your pocket or on a desk in front of you. Stay as close as practical so that the connection is stable and try to avoid going through too many walls. Also, cramped areas with a ton of other wireless electronics make it harder to stay connected. Indoors and line of sight works best. And of course, your headphones should be charged up and updated to the latest firmware if required. Oh, and microwaves. Keep fish and wireless devices away from microwaves. All right, Derek, pop quiz. Oh, yeah, uh, the pass method. Power on your headphones, activate pairing mode, Go to your audio source and search for the headphones and select them. Okay, now you're speaking my language. There's hope for you after all. All right, next week we will be talking about active noise cancellation. Don't forget to update your headphones firmware and your parents' firmware too. See you next time.